Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about investing in the digital asset space. Let's get right into it today. One taken on cut and be sure to stick around if you guys want a good laugh. I want to share something in this video that you guys will definitely be able to relate to. So before we get into this, just understand guys, time and time again, many countries have already come up with regulatory clarity. And before we get into this video, I just want you to understand you know, obviously, I'll title this video something like, will clarity ever come for XRP as a security, a commodity? You know, obviously, there can kind of be new classifications, but typically, it's black and white. Or is that regulatory uncertainty the very thing that keeps the price low and keeps from, you know, some institutional buyers and retail buyers from investing in it? Now, it's my belief, obviously, you can see the slow and steady approach for XRP and price appreciation. The longer we are at these levels, as I've been saying for what, a year, two years now, I'm starting to believe that we're actually just going to get a few big price jumps or just one big price set now gold has historically had price sets you know thanks to roosevelt they're actually talking about it more and more we've seen 2020 the year of the digital asset one of the craziest years of my life of my life and i'm sure you guys as well we can't really rule anything out um <laughs> we've had some of the craziest connections ever and now we are just still looking at a 19 cent xrp so yes i get your frustration but at the end of the day, I feel that I know where this is exactly or going exactly. I've been purchasing as much as possible whenever I can. Now I diversify my crypto holdings. I do not store them on exchanges. Again, I have a trading bag, but I have my long-term holdings in my crypto that I like, and I'm holding for life. Now I personally believe that we will see a bull run by end of year for these crypto assets personally and this is not just based off of no data and this is not just my gut feeling this is based off of actual statistics because we are seeing some altcoins and micro cap coins following their fractal once again so it's my belief just like you saw you know v chain take off you know cardano went up but it's retracing we saw xlm get a little push but it's retracing down it's my belief that we are starting to follow the fractal again xrp is the laggard it is the last to move now this is not just my belief many people have been using this you know, Mr. Level Up, many, many people have been around and noticed this for quite some time, but it's good that we're seeing more and more projects following this pattern. The funny thing is XRP is following the fractal, but it's trending sideways instead of up like the other assets. And I think that is quite obvious that whales, whoever you believe, is suppressing this price for the time being. Now, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research. Take everything I share here with a grain of salt, but I'm sure you guys can draw your own conclusions and decide for yourselves. All right. So let's get into this. So <clears throat> we have Chris Giancarlo, former CFTC chairman. XRP is not a security, declares Chris Giancarlo. So this is released by Forbes today. Now, what you guys have to understand is this. We understand, obviously, declaring Bitcoin and even Ethereum or not securities. We know many countries as well have classified them as commodities. It's typically black or white security commodity. Even in other countries, whether it's Thailand, Singapore, or even the UK, the UK's FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, remember, guys, they already classified XRP and they said it is not a security. It is, you know, a utility token, an exchange token, things of this nature. Now, all these new RippleNet partners that join the cloud a lot of them are directly regulated and overseen by the fca there's no coincidences in the space guys this is all planned this is a game of chess we've talked about you know volante um, i even saw on a video today brad kimes just showing remember the calculator that susan athey and i think robbie michnick and now he's lead of blockchain at blackrock I'm sure that's just another coincidence, but he's a former Ripple employee and they helped kind of draft those proposals and calculations for XRP and both huge bulls and advocates for XRP. Well, they have that calculator and even with Volante, which uses Volpe connected directly to the UK's FPS to target all these huge payment systems throughout Europe, you can plug that in and take Volante's $2 trillion in transactions per day. And just hypothetically, if even just that little amount of $2 trillion per day in transaction value or volume went over XRP, Currently, with those statistics from people that actually know what they're doing and are conservative, keep that in mind, that shoots XRP's price up to $500, right? To me, you know, $2 trillion per day. Yeah, that sounds like a lot in theory, but when you understand that everything will be tokenized and digital value will be moving seamlessly, and there's anywhere from 9.6 to $27 trillion locked up in pre-funded accounts as just in case money, then your standards might rise. Now, the idea is to own enough XRP that you're not waiting for those digits. Maybe, you know, a double digit or single digit XRP can make you, you know, a multimillionaire. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm here for three or four digits, all right? Not financial advice, but I do have big expectations. Otherwise, I would be, you know, in the stock game or just, you know, doing some leverage trading with metals all right so 
We know Ripple module with Volpe already connected. We can talk about Task Group, all those guys. We've ranted about that forever. Um, and this goes a lot, lot deeper. And people, only time will tell. Decide for yourselves. If this sounds too good to be true, that's fine for you. But for me, I have big standards and big expectations in my life. And I think that it's possible. So obviously, Ripple, they have the biggest interest in getting a high valuation for XRP. And we will see. To make a few thousand millionaires or even 20,000 millionaires, that's not a big deal in my opinion. Bitcoin made roughly 18,000 millionaires. And now we're actually entering true utility during, I might add, the craziest year of our lives. 2020, the global economy, this liquidity crisis, quarantine, a pandemic. I mean, we can see central banks accumulating more gold than ever before. Keep that in mind. All right, we're seeing token initiatives of CBDCs. They still need a bridge. It's all about trust. And they said that DLT is some of the biggest breakthrough technology because guess what? We'll have mutual trust for the first time. Everyone will have a record. It will be resilient. There's not a central point of failure and systemic risk. It's all right in front of you. And, you know, you guys can call me insane, but I find myself to be pretty rational and time will tell. You guys can laugh now. Um, and it's, it's just really comical to me, um, those that haven't seen this. Do a few years of research, and I think you're going to become a bull, at least in digital assets specifically. For me, XRP, even if the fractal is lagging and it's suppressed, I think those that actually hold will have the biggest upside because I think that will even break away from the fractal and reach higher highs than what that's showing. All right. So let's talk about this briefly. So we got Chris Giancarlo. We understand even he left to work on the digital dollar, the digital dollar uh, project, digital dollar foundation. Guess who's the lead architect for that as well? Accenture, one of the first investors in Ripple. No surprise. All right. Everything's going to be tokenized. We already know that they're connected with Craig Phillips, you know, Mnuchin, all these guys. And I say this time and time again, we understand Ben Lossky of the creator of the New York bit license for regulation is literally one of the advisors for Ripple now. But I'm sure that's just another coincidence to you guys. And when I say that, I'm only talking to the haters. All right. So called Crypto Dad. Guess what? He's on the payroll of Ripple. Ha ha ha. Sure, it's just another coincidence, guys. Lobbying, this is a game of monopoly. It's a done deal in my mind. But this type of fear is exactly what, you know, the community or whoever the powers that be are kind of aiming towards. And that's just my opinion. And I get it if you guys think that is just utter nonsense. All right. Now, what I wanted to show you really quick was this Galgatron, except this is a FUD piece cleverly hidden in behind an appealing title. And I agree with this. And again, formerly at Ripple, Corey Johnson saying another vote of confidence for XRP. Well, there's actually a lot of FUD in this article as well, but it is interesting nonetheless. All right. So talking a little bit about the history, you guys can find this on Forbes.com. Highly recommend checking this out. Um, there were a few points I wanted to go over, so I'm just trying to remember. Um, let's see, bit license. We're talking about that. Yep. And again, later joined the board of directors, excuse me, not advisor. But all right, guys, just understand this is all right in front of you. Keep that in mind. Now, right here, even Crypto Penny Co. So in my opinion, XRP is 100% not clearly not a security. We remember Jay Clayton. And yes, we would like him to say it again, the chairman of the SEC. This would be nice. And he's kind of gone over it with Bitcoin and Ethereum, but he cannot speculate. We know King Solomon again, showing proof of the old info from 2018 in August. Ripple specifically meeting with them again, special assistant to the president, John Roscoe. Um, it's just all right in front of you guys. We will see. All right. And this was actually on his public calendar, Jay Clayton. All right. But now I would like to remind you, and this is a good point. So blockchain barrister here says, you know, he's not going to say anything while the court has seized the mat uh, matter. It's called separation of power. And yes, each branch obviously, you know, kind of takes control again. So they have their own authority. They must depend on the authority of the other branches for the government to function. All right, let's keep going. Right here, Eric Dadun, I believe he's just another kind of VC tech investor um, and essentially just kind of saying this. So this article's cool. It's hypey. It's exciting for people to see that. But I'm sure there's still going to be fear and FUD in this marketplace. Don't think that we're out of the storm yet. So again, the security topic way overplayed. You hear me. I get so sick of talking about this and reading comments um, that it's an unregistered security. You really think that all like MoneyGram and all of these huge institutions and even some of the top central banks have already trialed it. I think Bank of England was utilizing XRP and Interledger protocol. And we're th really you really think these central banks are worried what regulators are going to say guys the central banks control the world they tell the regulators what to do this type of uncertainty is just another game of manipulation if you really think that you're you know some businessman with 30 40 years of experience in finance 
you're just a part of the system because there's bigger things at play here. I just want you to question it. I don't think it's, you know, all black and white. It's gray. All right. It should be obvious. This ends with a fine. Just like, remember, EOS, 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 that crypto, they got, you know, kind of in trouble, paid a little fine for early practices, and we're good to go for the rest of the time. That's the same thing we heard Jay Clayton say. Yes, maybe early companies did have or cryptos had security-like practices in the beginning. Yes, we would give them a fine. But the funny thing is, and he said this verbatim, that they would actually, their network would become more and more distributed and more and more decentralized. And yes, then they would no longer be a security. Wow. Well, look at the validators. Look who's running validators. Microsoft. Look at, you know, how decentralized it has been look at the business development contracts as well it's just a done deal guys in my mind now hopefully this isn't too hypey of a video i want you guys to do your own research don't take what i'm saying for a fact go vet it go check it but i'm just saying it's right in front of us this whole time so if and when xrp does moon and you guys see these high valuations and sustainable prices and tight spreads just don't you know call us lucky those that actually saw this and took initiative Again, he's not even a regulator any, anymore, and he's on the payroll of Ripple. So, yes, he has a vested interest as well. Question everything. Don't invest blindly, but just wanted to share that. All right. Now, lastly, before we get into other topics and news, so we got Panda Ripple XRP. I believe uh, this guy was at uh, um, Ripple's Swell as well. But anyways, just in detail of XRP is not a security. And got, kind of going through various uh, quotes here on IFLR.com, cryptocurrencies and U.S. securities laws. And just going through a few good quotes, again, there is strong evidence that the specific use case of XRP for on-demand liquidity constitutes a utility token, and in this capacity should not be subject to regulation as a security. Interesting. So again, we can kind of go through things if you guys want to. Again, XRP is not an investment contract. You can see the mere fact that an individual holds XRP does not create any relationship, rights, or privileges with respect to Ripple. I mean, all of this, you know, vernacular. Um, just trying to go through this. Let's see, you know, XRP is sufficiently decentralized to avoid regulation as security. And then you can argue, I mean, I get how people would think XRP is a security that I really do though. If I just saw this run, this project, I saw the holdings, um, and I just saw how it was distributed and at least the validators, I I'd, I'd call XRP a security, but until you do further, you know, research, you're going to see for yourself. And then you look at who's behind this on the board of directors, who's already in place and who stands to gain from these projects and original investors in ripple. And then also look at the ripple companies that are directly backed by Goldman Sachs, which essentially just is another group that runs the world and controls this fraudulent system. I think you guys would come to realize, you know, if you were a betting man, who you're going to bet on. All right. Even though Ripple holds a large stake of XRP in escrow because it's locked up and they do that as a way again to, you know, protect them from selling in the market. It also kind of differentiates themselves. Um, this is no different than Bitcoin miners selling mined Bitcoin. And yes, Bitcoin, come on, guys, there's just a few major mining farms in China. There's already double spending that can occur. It's not a secure system. I know that Pompliano, I saw a recent interview, he said, um, and just saying, you know, mathematically, it's the most secure system. No, go back to the code. The CTO, formerly CTO of Ripple, now he's working on Coil for the XRP ledger, Stefan Thomas. He literally coded Bitcoin from scratch again, and he looked at that and made sure XRP doesn't have that ability, right? We even have variant checking, as David Schwartz has talked about in the XRP ledger. This is not even, you know, Bitcoin 2.0. This is an entirely different beast. You cannot even compare XRP with Bitcoin. If you guys, you know, I wish all Bitcoin holders well. I wish it does well as a store of value or whatever you want to call it. But again, from actual utility based, using institutional wholesale interbank flows, my money is on XRP. Um, and it's simply just a matter of time. I don't care if we're at this price point until end of year. I'm waiting, you know, long term, you know, 2025 at least. We see 2030s capital markets. I think we're going to see some big price moves this year, as you can already tell. Um, I would be surprised if we didn't see metals and cryptocurrency start moving now. Because remember, the original promise of cryptocurrency was, oh, it's a hedge against traditional markets during crises. You know, we'll have this. Well, guess what? Bitcoin hasn't really done anything, and we've had a crazy crisis since 2008. I mean, I think this is way worse, obviously, due to the implications, even on small businesses. It's extremely sad. Um, I just think, you know, keep your mind open. Stay cynical if you want. I'm just saying, it's in my mind, it is a done deal. Simply a matter of time. Do your own research. Don't overinvest your emotional. If you're sick of keeping up with the news, set and forget. Extra people will still be here. All right?
All right, utility token for liquidity. Again, this classification, commodity, utility token, medium of exchange, something like that, okay? In these transaction flows, banks are using it, FIs are using it. It's simply a matter of time and scaling up, you know, obviously. All right. Um, constitutes utility token. If not a security, then what? And again, you can kind of see all of this and they talk about this time and time again. All right. So let's keep going. I want you guys to listen to this really quick. Um, so digital dollar project. And again, this is Chris Giancarlo, who basically just wrote this huge write up. And I just want you to listen to this again. Digital asset investor shared this, did a great video today, um, kind of going in depth with this as well. So just listen up. Because I, I think people don't fully understand. We, we, we understand the financial crisis as a financial crisis. I don't think we fully got our mind around the impact of the financial crisis as a psychological impact. And I think one of the interests in cryptocurrencies and digital assets is by a generation that lost faith in, in the institutions that had served us up and through the financial crisis. And they seek to, in a sense, move off that traditional set of rails and institutions into a, 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 a more pure, if you will, environment. And so I think the psychological impact of the crisis lingers today and as it's important as the, as the economic impact of that crisis. And I think it is the seeds. It's, 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 no, it, it's, it's an interesting coincidence that, that Bitcoin was actually created the same year as the financial crisis. Out of that crisis, I think, is going to be the seeds of a new financial infrastructure of the future. Yeah, I absolutely. I mean, this year is the 75th anniversary of the, the Bretton Woods Agreement. And just looking back at how much the international financial monetary system has evolved in I mean, 75 years we agreed to this international gold standard. And where we are today is so radically different. And then today, where you have these advanced technologies like blockchain, like AI, like the internet, you can just imagine how much more radically transformed our systems um, are going to be. Absolutely. There's a new paradigm coming and the seats of it are around us right now. Yeah. And and I also think this chick is in the know as well. All right. So right here, Matthew, L-I-N-Y, Amazon offers cross-border payment option for Chilean customers with Ripple and their partner D-Local or D-Local. Notice, I don't even have to go into this. We already know and we talk about in almost every video, D-Local, D-Local is integrated directly with Alipay, the world's biggest mobile network. Coincidence? I think not. All right. Wait, what did he have here? Yep. And just additional, obviously, customers just showing Ripple's connected to the D-Local. All right, transfer go. We've heard, you know, transfer wise, all these other groups with additional funding. Let's keep going. All right, so next, Crypto Eddy just showing this. I did see this and want to thank them for sharing this. So, again, four new companies have been added to RippleNet Cloud. We understand the cloud rollout, and we have here Crypto underscore Narcissist just showing this. We can kind of translate in Japanese if we want, just click translate tweet. You can kind of scroll down and see each and every group they have listed. And again, different screenshots just to kind of show this again. Even Lulu Exchange, 180 plus branches worldwide, 8.4 million customers. Um, 73 branches across the UAE. And remember, we've been really focusing on this region. So there's more to this. We've even seen, you know, Brad Garlinghouse in recent documents being one of the most influential people in these regions. Interesting. All right. So you can go through, you know, these different, you know, service providers and, you know, FIs and kind of decide for yourselves what markets we're looking at and on demand liquidity corridors. But as you know, um, it's great to see that, but I'm focused on kind of bigger things than ODL. All right, so right here, xrparcade.com. Definitely follow the site. Leonidas is a great researcher in this community. Five new Ripple customers. So again, some of these are what we already showed. Revealed 17 running on the cloud. Now remember, RippleNet Cloud was released recently. Um, we've seen good news and kind of just talking about the benefits here. You can see, you know, groups that we're well aware of like Asimo. MoneyGram, TransferPago, etc. And now we have some new groups talking about the scalability, cheaper costs, faster onboarding within, you know, what, five weeks or so, or at least five weeks faster than before. So no surprise, guys. Um, and basically just here, let's see, with one integration, one API, remember in the documents, we had Uber, Amazon, actually in examples for Ripple, you have to get permission to utilize an Amazon logo. So we already know, you know, AWS, Amazon Web Services, talks highly of the XRP ledger. You guys can Google this yourselves and actually read that. I've shown it in previous videos. AWS talks about how efficient XRP is and actually kind of bashes Bitcoin for this use case. And I'm just betting that XRP, it's not going to solve everything. No way. I'm just saying that it has a great chance in solving the payments problem and removing friction from the existing systems. Remember, Interledger Protocol, the XRP ledger, the native asset XRP, and potentially other smart contracts, capabilities, and hosting like 
Codius. All right, so one integration, one API, easy connection, live Yep, on RippleNet, five days faster and without the need for hardware, faster implementation, scalability. All right, guys, it's all right in front of you. And so we can kind of see and read a little bit about these guys. I love these write-ups. Leonidas has been working really hard. So we can see it allows users to send money. We get it from UK to the Philippines. So, okay, we have another corridor as well, kind of just hopefully growing that. And again, registered and regulated by the FCA that also called XRP. A utility token not a security remember that type of uncertainty is the perfect amount of FUD to keep everyday people or really big money out of this equation for now we'll see I think that price would you know absolutely move before you know we actually get regulatory clarity I mean I think that's a way for the price to allow it to you know kind of really really move and not allow a lot of people to get in but we'll see all right spot on money we can see established you guys can see the transactions fca licensed again do you see the obviously you know the sim, uh, similarities here right we got lulu exchange we kind of showed them as well 180 branches uae big group all right little by little we can see philippines you know southeast asia we can see kuwait we've seen all these connections as well all right qatar we talked about even what was it qnb bank in the past just remember it's all connected they were at ripple swell event as well you can see orbit remit all right philippines vietnam nepal 39 plus destinations around the world 15,000 plus cash pickup destinations and yes this is relatively low value transfers but this is still helping everyday people and it serves as that stepping stone for more liquidity and depth within the order books all right get the little guys going first in these you know highly high friction corridors all right and then we got top remit January never officially announced until now they just showed up on you know ripples document recently Indonesian so Indonesia or the Indonesian rupiah and then India is rupee all right I believe so founded in 09 all right and attended swell as well so usually hence when these groups are attending swell you can look for it and more I know we've talked about money match obviously been lots of talks about rendimento in Brazil D money all of these groups guys all right and the XRP community here YouTube bloggers Twitter everyone's just trying to put it all together all right so you can see ripples XRP deemed to have non-security attributes by the FCA and this was old news in 2019 just like we just I just wanted to reference it and kind of show you again just remember this is all right in front of you all right RippleNet cloud just going through these groups orbit remit all right we can see spot on money I was just looking at their website earlier Lulu exchange all right and then again Shane Nixon even showing that as well all right top remit all right next XRP crypto wolf ripples University Blockchain Research Initiative, UBR, UBRI, has been a transformational force for Professor Harvey's teaching of blockchain at Duke School of Business. All right, so again, more and more funding. We know even Chris Larson has funded millions of dollars towards various universities. Uh, maybe it was uh, Stanford as well in the past, just helping, you know, research and, you know, things of that nature. So don't be surprised. We're going to see more and more of this. I think even, what was it, uh, Australian National University? National, what is it? All my Aussies out there, you guys can correct me. Um, even, you know, areas in Singapore, just keep an eye out. We're going to see more and more of this 75% blockchain study, a retool and supply chain course. All right. So for all of you VeChain fans as well, all right, points to 1.7 billion people in the world that are unbanked and so often live outside of the social safety nets, added a new module this year to his course called Social Impact and Blockchain. Interesting. All right. And last but not least, just for a little laugh. So we got XRP Darren, one of the OGs and one of the best researchers in this community does have a Patreon and keeps, you know, private information there. And I, you know, recommend you guys check it out. So this guy's just funny, just these Facebook groups, guys, we are, you know, towards a completely fake economy with quantitative easing running rampant. If you guys look at the actual balance sheets and seeing, I mean, obviously, we're not seeing the private balance sheet because there's always two balance sheets. If we looked at that, I don't even want to know what we'd think. But you're realizing that this money is just fake. The equities market is complete BS. And look, at I mean, these people are just looking. I'm getting texts every day from friends about, hey, I want to get into stocks. Like, everyone's hitting me up now to invest in stocks. And <laughs> that ship sailed, man. I don't think they really realize what's happening. They're not looking at metals and cryptocurrencies, the assets that have been suppressed for several years. They're looking at the things that are reaching all-time highs, and then obviously many people are predicting that we could see another dump before end of year. I personally don't know what to think, but obviously I'm already just all in in cryptocurrency and precious metal at the time being, and hopefully I can use those earnings to maybe get back and diversify across the stock market and real estate in the near future. But I just thought this was funny. If you had $50,000 to put on one stock, 
what would it be? And these people are talking Chipotle, Microsoft. You know, I'm not looking for those types of minute returns, all right? I'd much rather just build a business than even do that. But again, I think investing in the power of exponential growth or compounding interest is a much more powerful thing. Again, Albert Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to like these videos, share it around, and shout out to my top channel members, JCR Central, Jamie XRP, Crypto Beginner, Philip Price, Ken Melendez, XRP Older 4, and XRP Blast, Eye of the Hiccups. So I'm trying to end this video now. Peace.